Hey, what's going on, DDO players? Axel here. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about Update 57 Preview. In my last video, I talked about up the upcoming hit point changes. And in this video, we're going to talk about the two remaining big topics for update, the upcoming Update 57, which is the new adventure pack and the imbue overhaul. So before I do that, really quick PC update. So if you haven't seen my videos for the last month or so, month, month and a half, been recording videos on my cell phone because my PC died, but I was able to get a new PC ordered this week, which is supposed to come early next week. So next week uh, I should be back to streaming and making better quality YouTube videos unless for some reason the PC gets delayed or I have to return it. So should be back to normal next week, which is awesome. I'm really excited about that. So, all right. So with that said, let's talk about the adventure pack first. So update 57 does have a new adventure pack and the Update is called Grip of the Hidden Hand. I haven't been on Lamania myself, but according to the DDO wiki and posts I've read in, Lam in the Lamania forums, it looks like this continues the Morgrave University um, Planar Eyes storyline. So this is the storyline that we saw in the pack Peril of Planar Eyes. We saw this in say like the the Dread uh, the the what's it called the Dread Sea Scrolls, which was the kind of the preview quest for Isle of Dread. This all kind of ties in. So it's been the, a continuous storyline they've they've really been pushing for the past couple years. So if you want to learn more about that storyline, go watch my Dread Sea Scrolls review. Go watch my Peril of the Planner Eyes review. I talk more about the storylines there. The new quests are level 16, 16 heroic, and 33 legendary. And the post on Lamania was a little bit ambiguous in terms of the number of quests, but we are getting at least three new quests in the language on the forum post. And I'll link the forum post below, both for the uh, adventure pack and the, um, the adventure pack and the imbue overhaul. I'll put all that stuff below, which I think the adventure pack stuff is just included in the main thread there, but I'll put that stuff below. But according to the language there, we're getting at least three. So we could be getting more. I'm not quite sure yet. They, they really don't make that clear. So we could be getting four, um, we'll, or maybe, maybe even more than that. We'll just have to see. But uh, yeah, but that's really about all there is to say about the, the quest so far. Um, I guess other than that, we can just continue on to the imbue overhaul. There's really not too much else that we know about the quest other than that. Of course, they were on preview for preview one, which is over now. I'm sure there'll be a couple more previews. So if you want to go check that stuff out, you can do that whenever Lamania opens up again. All right, so let's go on to now the imbue stuff, which actually is getting a lot of discussion on the Lamania forums, a lot more, even more than the, the hit points. It, it, you know, it's at least a longer thread at this point. Um, personally, I, what, I'm kind of whatever about this. I'm, I'm kind of surprised they, they are messing with stuff, even the hit points and this, and also the imbue. It just feels like stuff that wasn't really, uh, when I looked at stuff that they, they, they need to overhaul and work on, this stuff was, not even stuff I would consider, but it looks like it is an improvement, but we'll just go through the imbue overhaul thread here and I'll read through the thread. If you want to follow along with me, obviously I'm on my cell phone, so I can't overlay this on the screen, but if you want to follow along, you can open up the thread. All right, so this is Linabel. Linabel says, with update 57, we are embarking on a series of global overhauls that aim to streamline and shake up the game and bring new cohesion across multiple builds. The imbue system is one such overhaul and aims to drastically change how players approach certain builds as well as open up a large variety of fun, flavorful, and powerful new ones. But enough talk, let's see the details. An imbue is a new type of toggle in DDO that adds extra damage to your attacks. This extra damage can be specific to certain weapon types, Certain combat styles or even be focused on melee or ranged. Imbues can also scale with things such as melee or range power. You can only have one imbue active at a time, which means turning on a new imbue while one is already on will turn the old one off. So um, essentially they're taking the imbues that uh, already exist in the game and they're just adding more imbue options throughout the trees. They're changing some. They're taking some abilities that, that were not imbues and kind of turning them into imbues. Um, they're taking some abilities and just changing them into imbues, for example, like the War Priest Tier 4. But uh, there is a lot of stuff here. There, again, this is kind of like the hit point thread. There's a whole list on this thread of changes to the various heroic enhancement trees. So I'm not going to go through that all, through, through all that, read through all that, but you should look on there to see how this is affecting the classes you play. Uh, but let's continue on here. Um, imbue scale their damage with bonus imbue dice. If an imbue 
is added, for example, if an imbue added, for example, 1d6 fire damage, gaining one bonus imbue dice will change that to 2d6 fire damage. Two, two bonus dice means 3d6, etc. Bonus imbue dice are global and universal. They do not care about which imbue is active and will scale which, with each imbue based on this, the base imbue stats. So there's gonna be various extra imbue dice options throughout the trees, and it will add it to all your various imbues if you have bonus dice. So it's not it, it's not specific to just one specific type as it, as it might've been before with say like Ranger, which is specifically mentioned here, or Eldritch Knight. Now you can get bonus imbue through various other options in these trees. So it kind of, this change kind of supports multi-classing or, or um, picking th or, or reaching into different trees to get more dice. Whereas I guess the imbues that existed before were more focused on a specific type of imbue, imbue and a specific tree. But essentially, you know, as Linabel describes here, it's a toggle. So you can only have one active at a time, but you can earn dice in different trees. So there is some synergy there was possibly reaching into different trees, but essentially it's just a toggle. You toggle it on, you do some extra damage, whatever type you've taken um, in your enhancements or whatever you've, you've earned with your enhancement points. Okay. Okay. Limbo continues. Let's see. Um, oh, they can, oh, I'm sorry. Um, Okay, here we go. If this sounds familiar, you're right. This is exactly how our current scaling toggles work, such as Eldritch Knight or Arcane Archer. The big difference here is that there are no more Arcane Archer dice or Eldritch Knight dice. They all now scale off of imbue dice together. One of the benefits of these dice being shared is that there is relatively little opportunity cost to switching to a different element from a different tree, should you so desire. You can also aim for a specific imbues in some trees, then boost them up elsewhere. It also means that gaining a bonus dice is something that a large variety of builds will want making trees and feats that add bonus die highly desirable. So because these abilities are offered in several different trees, they can now add say bonus dice in a tree and it will be desirable to multiple different uh, characters rather than before where they might've offered an imbue, but only one class might have it. So it was like a ranger imbue or something. It wouldn't be that attractive, but now with them spreading imbues throughout the trees and there's a lot of options, I think almost every class other than, I think the only class I see listed here that doesn't have any imbues added is fighter, but pretty much every other, I believe every other class has at least um, one imbue option somewhere in their trees. All right, so let's see, Linabelle continues. There are a lot of, of imbues available, most of which have been adapted from existing procs scattered throughout our enhancement trees. Most of them are also designed most of them are also designed to be available very on, early on in your leveling process. There are also a lot of bonus imbue dice available scattered throughout areas that used to add specific die types or just that we thought would make sense. The sheer amount of changes and additions makes creating concise release nodes relatively tough, so we split them into sections based on the source. Okay, you notice some of the abilities here already do damage. Okay, that's that's about it. So um, really the bottom line here is they're taking some abilities that existed, turning them into toggles, um, they're making to these imbue toggles accessible um, in other areas of, of the heroic enhancement trees so you can possibly reach into different trees and get bonus dice. But yeah, so bottom line is look at this post and look at your classes that you play. There are probably going to be some new toggles you'll want to go after to get you a little bon extra bonus die. As I said before, this stuff can scale based on say like melee tower or range tower so it can be some nice, really nice bonus damage here. So yeah, just more stuff to be aware of. Uh, a couple other changes that, uh, let's see, there's some changes to say like some filler reset bonuses, some augments that were affecting say like uh, specific MBU dice specifically, those have been changed to reflect these changes. So um, they're being more, I guess, universal friendly because it's now being turned into a uni kind of a universal system instead of being something so class focused. Let's see, so uh, a couple other notable changes that were at the end of this post so I think the most notable one is Divine Crusader Tier 5 is being buffed. So Divine Crusader Tier 5 now adds vulnerability plus armor piercing on uh, hits while the embodiment of Law Toggle is active. Note that the embodiment of Chaos, Upgrade, and Fury is unchanged by this pass. So I don't really know why that's in this thread, but I guess because it's related to a the embodiment of Law Toggle. So, okay, uh, that's interesting, but I guess it's one... 
notable thing. Divine Crusader Tier 5 definitely, in my opinion, needed a buff. I mean, Divine Crusader Tier 5 does have the mass raise, but I think from like a DPS perspective, it, uh, or it really needed some help. So that's a nice welcome change. So yeah, guys, that's going to be about it for this. I mean, really, I, I don't know what it's to say about the imbue stuff. I was, I, I saw it and I was just like, okay, sure. I, I, I don't really see why they're doing this, but okay. I, I don't, sure. I mean, I guess, sure. That's about how much I care. <laughs> I'm a lot more uh, passionate about the hit point changes personally. Uh, and I care a lot more about that, but I felt like I, I didn't want to cover one big news item out of update 57 and not at least mention the other ones which well really this is the big this one is just as big as hit point if not bigger uh looking just at the at least looking at the um response from players on it this thread is longer and has a lot more views than the the hit point one so yeah guys that's about it uh for this video so there, there will be there should be more update 57 preview stuff and also just like every Thing on the money of this stuff that i've talked about here could change it's always subject to change until it's in the game um this stuff can change and even once it's in the game they can still change stuff they won't change I, like they're not going to overhaul do big overhauls of systems but they can actually um they can actually you know do balance changes and things like that but okay that's it for this video before i finish i want to talk a little bit about patreon so first of all thank you to Patreons, Robert Ray, Vavklov Snyder, Brent Erickson, Ryan Ozzy, Rouge Rogue, Clorox, thank you guys so much. Um, Patreon's been a really big help when it comes to this uh, having to buy this new PC in particular. So I've been saving all the money that I've raised from you all's donations. Those of you who have joined the Patreon, I've, I've saved all that money. Um, and I've gotten all that money and it's going towards the, the new PC. Okay, So I just want to say thank you to you guys who have contributed who are contributing now or maybe who joined Patreon briefly um, previously that I just really appreciate you all supporting the channel and, and, you know, really helping me bring these videos to you guys. So, cause I want to keep making YouTube videos and fortunately when a PC dies, you know, um, when it comes to things like video editing, you, you need a fairly beefy PC and the contributions from Patreon were able to cover um, did cover about about half of the cost of the new PC. So I'm really appreciative of that. Thank you all so much for your donations. And uh, yeah, guys, that's going to be it. I think that's all I have to say. That's going to be it for this video. You all have a good one, a good weekend, and I will see you in the next video, hopefully on a video with an, some improved uh, voice and, and video, so or improved picture and improved uh, voice um, quality. So all right, guys, that's it. I'll, I'll stop wasting time. You all have a good night.